Hey, Fitzy here, back at the game in another one. Look what I got made. Full tail panel section made for that 49 Chev Fleet line. I made it in two pieces. I used tools that I haven't used on this channel yet. I used a shrinker and I also used an English wheel. I'm going to take you through the process now of what I went through to make this entire panel. So stick around. Okay, let's get started. I'm back on the old 49 Chev Fleet Line. Uh, we got to turn around and make the back section here. We got to mount the two tailored sections we had made. Um, I've already done a few videos on this here. I made taillight sections and also done all those repairs on this. I made this section around the trunk lid. If you want to check out them videos, just go here. And these two videos here will show you all the work I got done today. If, you, if you're First time here, go check out them two videos before we get started on this one here because it'll be kind of hard to understand where I'm going with it. Anyway, so now I'm going to start getting into making panels for this one here. Um, don't worry, I'm still at the Mustang, okay? Uh, I'm doing a lot of little things on this here now and I've been just adding up little bits here and little bits here and it's just tedious. I'm still at it. It's getting close to being done, but I need a break from it and uh, I'm burnt out on the Mustang right now. So I wanted to get into some metal fabrication. Uh, I kind of miss it. I haven't done much of it, uh, no great extent of it. So I've been in the mood down to go at this panel. So I said, I'm just going to go at this and get it done. So the first thing I got to do now is I got the two taillight sections. I'm going to have to mount on the back of this here. This side here, I have a spot mounted in it. So I'm going to put this light in place here and mount it permanently with a couple of cleat goes. So that I know it's exactly where it's to. And then I got to duplicate this one over here and get this one here to match that one there. So let's get that done. So here's where I'm to. Okay, well, this side over here, I already had it mounted up here and then I mounted it. So I found a location where I was happy with that. Okay, and I mounted that. Don't ever be concerned about uh, mounting bone at the same time. Find the one side and mount it, okay? So I got that mounted there. So then what I did is I come over here and I laid this in place with a couple of pairs of ice strips, clamped it, moved it, clamped it. Now I went and put these two strips of tape along here, along the bottom of the light and along the top of the light. These here are crucial because I wanted the lights to be parallel to each other or in the height of them. And all I did is I used reference points on the car here and here. And like if you look at that lower valance, as I back up here, you can see the difference on that there going across there and uh, the way it fades out and whatnot here on both sides. Now, after moving this in light a few times now, getting this here where I'm happy with it, but by using the tape like it is, it's just uh, masking tape that I got taped on here and I just got a string across there. I didn't touch the tape because it'll always distort it. And uh, I just did the same thing up here. So now I got two parallel lines from the two lights that I got to make parallel on the back side of the car. I gotta make a parallel to this section of the car down here and up here in these corners and where this shapes here. This side over here, I started off, it was down too low. And so then I had to keep moving it up to get it all straightened away. So now once I had that straightened away, then I had to find out the kick on the light, okay? So I had this light already mounted where it was too. And what I did is I put the tail light in place and I marked the center of the tail light here and the center of the tail light here. And I did the same thing over here, center taillight, center taillight. Then I put this strip of tape down across here. Now, I have a simple box, okay? And, and all I got to do is measure these measurements here. And I'll play around with this side over here on the bottom till I got this here right. Now, I've after taking this measurement already, this here is spot on. From here to here, and from here to here, spot on. The distance from the bottom here into the valance here is the same on both sides from here in there same on both sides i'm happy now where we're at is too okay i know for a fact now that both lights are parallel to each other and and they're basically the same height on either side because i know for a fact when you do an x measurement like even if this light is tipped in a bit or tipped out a bit or what like that this light here will be tipped in or tipped out the same as this one is. If this is tipped out, this will be tipped out. If this is tipped, if this one here is tipped in, this one here is tipped in. But I wanted to get it so it was pretty well parallel to the car, because if you look at this line here, coming back through the car, it goes straight down through the center of the taillight. So I wanted the taillight straight up and down in the back of the car. 
So this is what I come up with. I've done an X measurement and my X measurements are perfect. So now I got all this figured out and I know where this panel got to go. I got to put a few clicos in this here now and mount that right where it's to. You might be wondering, now how did Tony measure that diagonally? This is all I had. I've used this before in other videos, seams just tapes. So I went up here and I clamped it on and I put that on a bit of an angle and you can see that mark there, that's on zero. And all I did is I just came over to here and I measured it to there, which it is 64 and a half inches to the mark on this side, okay? And then I just come over here and repeated the process, clamped it on there and done the diagonal that way and it was 64 and a half inches. So this seems to tape uh, comes in pretty handy. It's kind of hard to do that with uh, regular measuring tape, trying to clamp it, hold on with this stuff here. You can just clamp it on and it's pretty pliable so it'll just go wherever he wants to especially if you're going around corners or crown panels or whatever it's good to have in your box right so i got that mounted in place and i double checked my measurements everything is good so now the next thing i got to figure out is this center panel here now i don't tend to have this going straight across here going straight in from that i want this here to come out around the back roll around here and tip in and, and go to the flow of the back of the car like this around the back side of it if you look at it, that's over exaggerating that's the way it'll go so basically when this comes off this tail light here this panel here will come in and then roll along here now i want it to flow this way so what i got to do now i'm going to make a template coming down here and roll it in and have it so it flows underneath and i want the roll in the center to be the same as that tape if you look at this tape here, see that's the top of the roll there, and the top of the roll will be right across there like that. So when I look across at this here, my roll underneath the back of the car will be the same, but it will tip in, go across, and tip back out again. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make a template of this section from here to here, uh, just rolling down. I'm going to leave this piece of tape here. I'm going to take this off because I'm going to need trunk lid in order to do the roll. So I'm going to turn around and make a template for there. So here's what I come up with. I made this little template here and I bent it down around and basically uh, what I done I played around with it because what I want to have is when you stand back here and look in at it the roll right here will be the same as the roll out here so it'll be a continuous roll will be going right through the back side of it here but this here was kicked inboard like you can see this is in about two inches an inch and a half inch three quarters off of this straight line here which is the tailing section I want that sticking out a small bit I want the back to go across here and then tip out to the light. That's the way I want it. And I got this to flow to the lines on the body. It's kind of hard to see, but this goes up and flows up through here. Now, the problem I got, if you look here, there's a bump right here. There's a bump right here in the trunk lid. I, this is rusted out here. i got to replace it. So I'm following this line up here. The way this flows down here, then I just rolled it off that way. Now, right here now, you can see i got a, pair of, a couple pairs of voice scripts here. This is just straight down flat steel now. I got to put a lip on the bottom side of this here so I can actually have something to weld to. So I never done that when I made the panel before because all I have there now is, is just regular flat steel. So I'm going to put a lip on the bottom side of that. That's going to be one of the first things I'm going to do. If you look here, you can see the way they've got this run down and it's going in underneath there and I got to clamp down. So I got to put a lip right here for clamp to. But you can see the way this rolls like this here. I'm going to build this section here and go to the middle of the roll same as i did before as you can see when i cut that in half there is not a big roll there and it's not a big roll there so this is what i'll do i'll build this section here down here that'll do the entire bottom that'll come over here and it'll come out to meet this panel here it'll go actually go in and it'll actually attach to this section here it'll go right along so i'll actually have the shape of the bottom of the panel coming along with a slight rolled edge on it I'm not going to overthink this. I know I got to head the roll there and I got to go from there because this will just be one panel then that I'll have to make going this way and I'll have to put a crown on it going both ways. But first of all, what I'm going to do is I got to go dig out some steel and I got to put a lip on the bottom of this here and then basically make the lower bottom panel. Now, this here has got a slight curve in it all the way around and it rounds it on the back side here. To put a flat bottom on this here, I'm going to end up having to cut a big long strip and trying to fit it and do it all. I'm going to make it in sections. I'm going to do the corners, a section here, a section here, a section like that, going along to put the lip in there, and I'll just weld the sections together and tie it up after. It's a lot faster, and I find it easier because I'm more concerned about getting it level this way, okay? If I try to make one big strip to go to full length of that, I'm going to be fighting with it the whole way. I'll just concentrate on a short piece here and then a longer piece here, and then a longer piece and so on 
and I'll work one piece from one side to the other and then once it's all welded in place and then I'll, all I'll do is I'll just get down and eat it and I'll just cut it right along the inner side lip so I can lift about a half inch lip all the way around so it gives me something to weld to and you'll never know the difference it's just a lot more control being able to do this than trying to make that out of one big piece this is all I got it's a bunch of scrap that I had kicking around here saved up and stuff like that I'm not worried about it I'm just going to take this piece here now Put that like so, weld that on there, and then I'll trim it up after the fact. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to trim it to fit this corner here first. I'll mark it so it fits in there nice, and then I'll just do the same thing and up there. Here's all I did. I went and laid the piece of metal up where I want to, and I marked the shape of it. Then when I got to the end of the metal here and the end of the metal here, this here, I made a right angle, okay? I just cut it in across there at a right angle. And over here, I'll do the same thing. Cut that there at a right angle. So then I'm ready for the next piece here. And this here will butt up against the piece that's already there. And then all I'll do after the fact, I'm just going to lay this up in place, leave all this here, tack weld this along here so it's in place. Then I'll trim this off, weld it up. And then later on, I'll get down underneath the truck, underneath the car, and I'll just trim that along there like that and put a nice little lip on the bottom side of it. All I did is I placed a piece of tin underneath the bottom of it, like I showed you, and I cut it on an angle. And then I just welded it solid along here, okay? Uh, welded every inch or so, spot welded it or so, and you know, just control the heat a bit and everything. But I didn't worry about the shape out here. I just wanted to put a lot of heat in it and weld it right across. And I just kept going around. This is the second piece I put in here. You can see it sticks off a bit here, and I welded it on. I put a lot of heat in it. You can see the way, because this got a curvature in it, a flat piece will actually stick out in, in a couple of sections. So I did make this up in one, two, three, four, five pieces. So as you can see over here now, I gotta grind it off, okay? All it is I grinded it off because I had a lot of heat in this edge here, okay? And I'm actually welding this panel through to the top side in here. So basically I got lots there and I just grinded it off, grind it flat, and now I got a nice little lip on the bottom side there that I gotta get down underneath now and I'll dress it up. And you can see, that's all I've done. It's just quick, fast, easy. You can probably get really carried away with it, make a perfect piece or take a piece and put it on a 45 and and put it in a shrinker stretcher and roll around the corner and spot weld it on there, all that type of stuff. You can do a lot of different things, I just find this faster. So I'm gonna go ahead now and get this all grinded off and then get started on the bottom side. So here's what it's like on the bottom side. Now I get everything done. You can see the large pieces that I put in there. And uh, now right here, I'll just run a zip blade through these sections here now and I'll put a pair of uh, voice grips between them and weld up these seams here. Going along here, you can see there's another seam there, gotta be done. And, uh, and get, same with down right there. And down there as well down that end so that after I get that done all I'll do then is I'll come along here and I'll put a probably three-quarter inch tape or something along the edge of it here and I'll just mark it and I'll just cut off the excess off with the grinder and put a nice little lip all the way around this here and then that'll be done I went ahead and got them all welded up the pieces well together and now I got them marked as you can see going along there all the way along and a mark now to cut all that off there now, and then I'll have a nice little lip on the bottom side. And there it is. Got a lip on the bottom of it now. Going right along. Wrap around the corner. All that's all dressed up now. It's only about that wide, as you can see. Now I got a nice little lip that I can actually put my panel to and I can spot well to. And, uh, it was, and it follows along into the side there, so now I can close up this cavity here so that nothing can get up in behind this panel. So now here's my template I had earlier, and that fits there like so, it lines up there and it lines up there. This, this is my shape here now. Where I'm going to start to here first is I'm going to make the bottom, okay? I'm not going to make this part piece first, I'm going to make the bottom first and get the shape figured out. So I had this template made up, and what I got done, here's my rolls. But what I'm going to do is join it through halfway through the roll. And you can see I got it marked here now. So if you look at that there, that rolls this way, and that rolls that way, and joins it in the middle. So I'm going to make the bottom this wide. I'm going to make it a little bit wider than this here, probably about this much wider, so I got a bit of access. So when I go to the cotton ball, I'll be able to get it. Okay, I reinstalled the two taillight sections, and I got them installed because I want to. I got to cut a piece off that goes straight across from one side to the other. Now the problem I'm running into is that. The metal that I got, this cabinet here, I have a lot of this white cabinet stuff. It's only 64 inches long, okay, the overall length of it. And if you put it tight to that side over there, uh, it's a shy about to here somewhere, about an inch or so. So I'm going to split the difference up, and uh, I'll just probably put a strip on the bottom side on both sides. I was playing around with some ideas, but I said, no, keep it simple, Tony. 
So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to measure from the bottom side here, okay, because this is the farthest corner back, and I'm going to come up to the middle of this bend here, a little bit past this, on this roll here, because i got to do this roll as well, see? And so I'm going to come up to here, and I measured up 12 inches from here to the end of that deer. So I'm going to cut a strip off, 12 inches, that'll come up through there, it'll go straight across there. You can fool around, probably make templates and everything, but it's a big section. Uh, I find I think it's going to be a lot easier to do it with a uh, a large panel because I'm going to have to take the panel out and cut it in and do all kinds of shapes to it. Like here's all I got down here now. I got it marked out. I'm going to uh, mark this now 12 inches and then just cut that off. When I cut off the panels, as you can see, there's a little roll lip on the bottom edge of it on, on both ends. There's one there and there's one down there. And I was going to start trimming it off, and I said, Tony, no, leave that there for now. Just cut it off first and do a test fit on it. So I done a quick test fit on it. And this is how much I need, okay? I only need that much on both sides. All right? So there's a lip there. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to fold that lip over, trim it off and fold it over. I only need a short piece of it, right? And I'll fold it over and that'll take up that gap there and then I can actually do it all in one piece. But you can see now where I'm going with this now. I got a laid in place there and now it's a full square piece. I got it squared up. So now, like, I like working with square metal because you can measure. You can get everything square and get everything fit and nice. And you can do uh, comforts. Like, I'll measure from here now to here on both sides, make sure that panel seems right. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to scribe along that line there. Scribe that there. And then I'm going to go back three quarters to an inch. And then I'm going to mark another line just on the other side of that there. That'll be the little lip that'll weld down on the bottom side of the panel. And then I'll fold this up this corner and get that fitting. That'll be my first step that I'm going to do here now. I'm not going to think, think too far ahead. Tink. Lord Gumbs. That's the real Newfoundland anyway. Tink, boy, guys, I got tink. So I'm going to go ahead now and mark that and uh, take it off and cut it so that I can actually clamp it from the inside. I'm probably going to put a couple of uh, clicos in it and have it permanently mounted so I'll know exactly where to go each time I put it back. So I went ahead, I just showed you, I marked that spot. So when I took the panel off, I looked at it some more, and I sized it up, Tony. I said, there's a lot of wastage in here. Uh, and uh, the more I got out in this front corner, I can work better. And uh, I measured it up, and I said to myself, why don't I just go back to the inside? So I pulled it out an inch and a quarter and remarked it again along here, okay? So this is out now. This line here, it means nothing. I just pulled the entire panel out another quarter of an inch, or an inch and a quarter, and then I basically marked it on the body again. Then I put lay down a three quarter inch strip of tape all the way along it, and then I marked the inside of it. So I'm left with another mark. See? Now that mark is what I'll cut off. And this lip that you see here, this will go on to the lip on the bottom of the car, and this is where it will be spot welded to on the bottom side of the car. So I went ahead and I got that trimmed off, and I got that cut out, so then it's ready to put back in there. Some of you may be wondering, like Tony, that's a lot of material there. You're going to cut a lot all out and all this type of stuff. Uh, my advice when it comes to building custom stuff like this here is get an idea in your head and you know that you've got to come out so far, give yourself lots of room, okay? Don't think that far ahead that, okay, you know, I know this is only going to be four inches here, so I'll cut this like this and come up around here and do all that now. No, you're thinking too far ahead. One step at a time, I'm going to work. I'm main concern right now is getting a panel mounted to the bottom of the car. Okay, I'm not worried about this out here. I give myself lots of material out here that I can work with. Okay, I will get to that when it comes time to that. I don't double think and think, okay, I gotta do this and I gotta do this and I gotta do this and I gotta do this. No, right now I gotta do one thing and I gotta get this here mounted. Uh, some people overthink things and try to make all this at once. Okay, it can get complicated. Okay. Uh, this is a complicated piece. It's not something that you can turn around and, uh, you know, you got something to go by. I'm doing all this basically uh, as I'm going along. I have an idea in my head. I thought about it and uh, the way I want to build it. So I know that the idea needs four inches here and it needs 12 inches out to here. But I got like 13 or so here or 12 inches right out to the tail end of it. From the corner and i got lots of material here and i got lots of material here so whatever i does in here now i know i got material to do it so i'm going to go ahead now fit this on it and get this where i'm happy with it so i went ahead and i clamped it on in a bunch of locations and then i went and, uh, went and drilled some clicos and put them in 
one, two, three, four, five, six locations. So now that I got that all figured out, I can let these go. Alright, I can let all them go. And that has a permanent hole in it, where it gotta go. Now that I get that done, now I can go up top and uh, start figuring things out. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flatten this edge out now. I'm gonna cut the bottom lip off of that and then flatten it out. All I'm gonna do right here, as you can see here, I only use this side lip. So I'm gonna cut this piece off here, remove that, and then I'm gonna flatten this edge back down and flatten it out. All I did is I took my I beam, my big old I beam, you've seen that before, laid down the bench, and I just slowly worked the ends of it over after I cut the lip off it. So it's pretty good there now. So this is probably gonna to have to be cut sort of like this type of thing when it's all said and done, see? Or sorry, wrong way, this way. Gotta be cut sort of like that when it's all said and done. So now that I got that all done, I can fit it back on the car again. So I got it put in place, and I went and put the goes in it, held it all in place. Then what I did is I clamped it on the two taillight sections here. Okay, then I start playing around with the taillights. I have a center line marked here and a center line marked here on both taillights. So then I start measuring from each from there to there and from there to there i want to have both of them parallel so the two of them would be the same distance then i went and done the next measurement from here to here to make sure that one wasn't tipped out and the other one wasn't tipped in i've been playing around with it here now for about 20 minutes and using the old uh, seamstress tape going from one side to the other like so getting my measurements right and that's how I got it all figured out. So now what I'm going to do that I got that figured out, I'm going to put a couple of clicos in the bottom down here. So that way, that'll have a position where that got to return every time it goes back. So now that we got them clamped in place, and everything got a permanent fixture, so these can go right back in the right place now every single time. And this can go back in the right place every single time. I went and test fit this template that I made, and put it in place, and I played around with it a bit, and I just wanted to lower it a small bit, because it rested nicer here, okay? Uh, I got roughly, it's quite interesting, this line that I put in it is basically the flat side, okay? So all this here, right along here is flat and then she'll start to roll up from there. So what I went and did then is I measured from in here out to my little roll, okay? It was three and a half inches from here to that half roll where I was going to. So I went and added a half inch to it so we got room for overlap and I made this little a uh, scrap piece of tin and I made it four inches long. So now I'll use that as a measuring device. I'll go along here and I'll just measure that and mark it and mark it and mark it so that it follows this flow here. I don't want this to go straight across. I want this to follow the flow of the back of the car over exaggerating is going to do that, right? So this is what I'm going to do. Now I'm going to go ahead now and mark all that along there and get this section figured out. Now I went ahead and I marked all these sections here. As you can see, coming along here, mark points, and I just drew a rough line coming along there, the marker distance, so that's how much I actually need. Now, I was playing around with this over here, where I have my little template laid here, figuring out how I'm going to put this corner together, and I would like to have this come back this way. I was hoping to leave much of this here and cut it up and then roll it, but I'm getting into too much. You've heard me talk about doing one thing at a time, so... I've decided all I'm going to do is concentrate on this section down here and get this rolled up and get this entire panel made here, have that done. And then I'm going to join the two taillights into this section here. So that's all I got to worry about then. Um, I was kind of overthinking it and I was kind of hoping that I could actually do something here. All I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this lip here because I want to be able to join onto this here. And I'm just going to roll this up here so that way I got something to come off of here. And I'm going to go on all in behind the light with the panel so I got room to cut it off after the fact. It's a lot easier to uh, to do this than it is to uh, basically worry about it later. I'm going to have to cut that all the way into there, like so. Cut that right in there so I can roll this panel. Um, you may, like, sometimes you may say, Tony, you're using a lot of wastage on your metal. Why couldn't you make it smaller? Um, one thing I've learned over the years is that it's a lot easier to cut metal away than it is to add onto it, especially when you're trying to do curves and shapes like that. Like, this would be no good if I cut this off in here and then realized it was too narrow in the middle here and it was too wide out here on this end here and I had a well a piece here and then you'd be trying to roll it and then it'd be very hard to roll. You can't roll a welded metal like that because the... MIG welding is harder, right? So I've always preferred to start with larger pieces 
and then work my way down in size, right? I had other thoughts and plans that I was going to try here, but as I got to this point, I started to see other problems. So I said, okay, stop there. Let's turn around and just concentrate on getting the back done and let's do the tail light after. So I'm not even gonna worry about the tail light right now. I'm just gonna concentrate on getting this whole rear section in place. So I'm gonna go ahead now take this off and cut this panel and uh, get it ready to roll. So I got that trimmed off there, like so. I cut off the line there and I cut it in there. So it's relieved now I'm gonna work on rolling this out. All I'm going to use for that is a simple hammer and dolly. The oldest dolly I got in my box. I'm just going to take that there now and take that and roll it up there. And the reason why I'm using this dolly, when you lay it up against a template, this is how far I'm making my roll. You can see that's pretty close to the shape of that there. If you look at that there. So that dolly there is the right contour for me to roll that roll from this end here all the way around. So I'm going to use that dolly now and start rolling that edge. Just to give add support underneath, I went and Clamp this on with like a half a dozen pairs of voice grips on the bottom side to give it strength. I'm going to use the car itself as my block. As you can see, it's starting to take shape there now. It's got a nice roll coming on it. All I'm doing is just you can see the markings from the dolly. We're positioning to it, and then I'm moving inside and I roll it some more. And I've been just taking my time. It's a primitive way of doing it, but just take your time and uh, work it along and take a bit of time. So you just slowly roll it. Roll it. You can actually see the roll coming out there. And don't try to work it all one area one one time because you'll end up stretching the metal. So you just got to slowly roll it up. Like that. Oh, I got a lot of hammering ahead of me, so I'm gonna go ahead now and get that done. So I rolled it some more, and if you look down, it, you'll see that it's in and out, it's wobbly and everything like that. I'm not worried about that as yet. That's the, that's the lip edge, and I'm just working it along so I can actually get a nice, decent roll on the bottom side of it, and it's coming out nice. So what I'll do now is I'll tighten up the top side of here and I'll start working on plemishing this here out to get this edge here half straight. Remember, a half inch of that is going to be overlap, so which is good. And when I get that all rolled up to where I think it's close, I'll do a quick test fit on it and see how it fits with the uh, template. Now I went ahead and I dollied the straight edge up along here. I got it all dollied up. Some may ask, say, why did you just do that like in a pipe anvil? If you look at that, that is not... A straight panel okay it's a crown panel this here turns like this goes at an angle so you got to do all this by hand and I went and test fit my little uh, jig thing that I made up my little template and it's pretty close right still needs a small bit more work to it I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna go back and dolly it up some more get that to fit nicer and then then uh, we'll clue that up well, there it is. I'm happy with that. The way that rolls up along there. If you look down underneath, you can see the way it rolls on the back side of it. I went and uh, dollied it a number of times. I'd say I'm about 45 minutes now, close to an hour, uh, just dollying this, getting it all fit, getting the shape right. Um, played around with this here. Got that to fit in here, as you can see. Right. It's pretty good, so I'm happy with it. All on there. It uh, still has to be fine-tuned, but I still have to do a cotton butt through here with the top panel. But I got it to a point now where I'm happy with it, and I'm within reason. Like this, this actual lip here will be cut back. Through the middle of the next panel I make, I'll make sure it comes down overlaps this panel here. So I'll be rolling into this one here. Just a quick note, uh, this is all I use to make that lower panel. And my little template, 
hammer dolly. I done most of the work with this dolly here. This is a dolly I picked up when I was like 13 years old. It's an old cheap dolly. It's not polished. It's beat round and uh, you know, it's not a real good one, high quality one. This is a better quality one. I just had this here for straightening edges. But for the most part, basically this is all I did to form that entire panel. Yeah, okay, so now next thing I got that clued up and straight away good enough for what I'm doing. And what I'm gonna do now is make a panel for here. Okay, and this one's gonna be a little bit trickier. I'm gonna have to haul out some high-tech tools for this. So usually on these ones here. Uh, I likes to have a rough skin um, off another vehicle. It's the easiest and fastest way to do it, and you're pretty well right on with it. I got to use an English wheel here now. Okay, you're going to finally see me do some English wheel work. Uh, don't count on me being a professional at this. Uh, like I've said before, uh, I am a bodyman, not a coach builder. That's the proper terminology for it. And uh, this is a, an English wheel I built probably 15 years ago. Princess Auto came out, was not here at the time, and uh, you could not get English wheels of no sort here on the island. I bought an, a kit off eBay, which consists of this section here and this section down here with the wheel and all this, and these little dial things and this coupler and whatever. Uh, it did have a, diff a smaller wheel on it. You can see that I've after modifying it to uh, make take these bigger wheels. I come across these bigger wheels a few years ago and uh, I picked them up and modified my machine to fit them. So uh, like it's nothing really fancy about it. I've had to put these steadies on it because all this does, these are locks sections here. They're just nuts and bolts basically. They just locks it from going going down. It's a locking mechanism, it's a poor setup. And then this here just adjusts it up and down, right? Adjusts it up and then adjusts it down, see? Uh, it's just quarter inch box square tubing. It's probably not the best system set up. It should be braced more, probably have a, something on the outside of it. Uh, the stand itself is just a piece of steel that I had kicking around. They serve no other purpose than whatever they were there before. Uh, I don't know what this was. It was, a, it was a frame that I had and I said, this uh, looks best kind. I'll just use that there and put some four inch on that and put some four inch frame on that and I'll have myself an English wheel. I could go building cars. Yeah, hello. But anyway, I built this about 15 years ago. And, uh, you know, I haven't used it a lot. Uh, I've played around with it. I've, uh, if you notice, I use a lot of crown panels from old cars and stuff like that. I prefer to use that. Uh, it's a great technique. It's a skill in itself. Uh, I just find it very, very time consuming. Okay. It's, it's not a tool that you just turn around and pick it up and use it and you know everything about it. You know the techniques. Uh, you can read all about that and see guys using it. But the only way to get good at using an English wheel is to actually use it. And I don't have a lot of hours on this, so don't go taking what I do as uh, gospel. There's lots of other guys out there uh, that are sk very skillful at English wheel work. Uh, I got it as a hobbyist. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things. I built it, and I probably use it maybe a half dozen times. I, I use it for when I'm bead rolling floors, uh, floor pans, and, uh, you know, i got to put a bead in them. I'll stretch the metal where the bead is too, so it takes it doesn't warp the panel as much. Um, I've played around with it. I've made panels with it, and, you know, I started to build a tea bucket, and it's just one of those projects got put off and put off and put off, and then next thing you know, I just never bother to finish it. A number of different wheels came with the kit that I got, as you can see, they're full of dust. So my take on an English wheel, um, the thing I find, if you're going to get into doing a lot of customization and building a car from scratch, by all means, it is the gear for that. But if you're restoring a muscle car or you're doing rust repairs and doing a patch panel here and a patch panel here, uh, it's nice to have around. But like this machine here has been sitting in this garage now for well over a year and I haven't touched it. I've moved it around the garage because it's been in the way. And you know, other than that, I haven't used it. Today is the first time I've used this. And I can honestly tell you, if I had an old roof off a 50s car here, I probably would have cut the roof off at first before I went and used this. But that's just me. So, you know, it's one of those tools that uh, you'd like to have, but do you really need it, okay? Uh, you know, if you're just starting out and you want to get into uh, 
restoring old cars um this is i wouldn't think this is a tool that you you're going to need right away if you're planning on building a car from scratch and you want to get into uh, rolling panels by all means uh is a good panel for that so that's just my take on it um different people look at it differently than i do so i just wanted to voice my opinion on how what i think of the actual you know, having an english wheel in a hobby shop you know it's one of those things it all depends on what you're doing Okay, I went and cut a piece out that is as long as the lights from here to here and I made a 12 inches wide gives me lots of material and I went and cut out the piece So it was the right size and everything nice and big then I just went up and I clamped it in place Okay, and I leveled it up as best I can going across here Okay, don't have to be perfect and then I went on the back side here And I pushed it in and I marked it off the other panel and I'll show you why I marked it off the other panel there now because you would think that this would be a direct roll across the back, but it's shaped like this here, okay? Over exaggerating it. So now that I got a mark on the inside, I could see the angle that the roll has got to be on. So here, if you look at this here, you can see I got there's a mark on. It's a rough line, but the way the mark is done on it, okay? Now this is where you can fool everything up here. I got a straight edge here now. I'm going to lay up against this. Lay that against that side there. Line up both sides. Right now you can see that the straight edge is pretty close on the line here, but as you come across You can see here in the middle. It's over an inch. Okay, and then it fades out again to this side here This is where you could actually make the mistake of trying to roll that edge and wondering why it won't fit uh, So what I got to do now is I know that there's a crown on that panel and that I got to roll it to that crown crown Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this line I know where this line's to now and I want to know where's the bottom to and I'm going to cut it off on the right angle so basically I'm going to turn around and transfer this line down to here just by measuring off it and I'll trim it off down here so that this here bottom section is shaped like it should be I just ran a tape line around the existing line that I had put there then I marked over I found the center where it was uh, in the middle and I made a little template this thing here and all that done that just took a measurement from there to there like so and then I just went along here and transferred it up that much further I wanted to only take off as little as I can as you can see like I laid that like that and mark that then I ran another strip of tape along that there now I'm going to mark that and cut that piece off and that will give me my curvature that I need as you can see I got the panel all made I got a nice crown on it and it rotates it flows to the back of the car it looks simple enough don't it Attempt one. Attempt two. It's not an easy undertaking, I guarantee you that, trying to make that in one large panel. Uh, you're going to need specialty tools to make big panels like this here. I had to go out and get a land of a shrink or stretcher. I don't have one, and I had to get a little one. My buddy's got one, so uh, thanks, Kevin. And uh, I was building the panels. Uh, the first mistake I made is I started to crown the panels on the English wheel. Uh, that was my first mistake. Uh, the biggest problem I had is when I rolled this edge here, it made the panel go this way, okay? Because of the roll on it, it was stretching the panel and it was making the panel go this way. I needed the panel to go this way. So I tried a number of different ways. I tried to shrink it uh, by tuck shrinking it. Uh, it just seems like it was not working properly. Uh, I've even went to the point of uh, trying to use the weight of the English wheel uh, to try to roll it. That didn't work. Uh, the problem I kept having is, is getting this curvature in it and getting this to flow underneath the bottom of the car. What I come to realize had to be done is I had to start off with a flat panel, uh, cut it to the arc on the bottom that had to be cut. Then I had to put a slight curvature on this here. Okay, I put a slight curvature on this here. Then what I had to do, then I had to shrink, starting from the middle and coming to the outside so I can actually get a crown on the panel. It took a bit because it was actually crowned this way first, so I had to crown it this way. And just roughly uh, close on two inches from this point to this point in a crown. Right? And so it took a bit to get figured out, but once I got it figured out and it started to work proper, it went well. Then when I had that panel rolled and I had the uh, I had it stretched, then I started to put a crown on it, okay? 
I put a very slight crown on it, just enough, because when this here panel went this way here, this panel did this over exaggerated. It was, you know, it was below flat. So what I ended up doing then, I ended up crowning the panel up so I can actually get a bit of a crown on this here. It was a lot of work. I'm, um, this is my uh, second day at this now. I was two full days at it, just trying to figure things out. Um, these doing the large panels sometimes really get, get to you and it can cause a headache. But I will say this, every time I fold up a panel, I learn something, okay? Don't ever get frustrated with it. Um, there's a lot of body men out there and you know metal guys out there that have uh, done panels and fooled them up and had to redo them again. Uh, most of what you see out there uh, are guys that are doing panels and they do them once and you figure, oh well that's wonderful. Uh, these guys, I'm gonna tell you, have fooled up panels in the past. Um, this is how they learn. It's not a type of thing that you can just like read a book or look at a, at, a, at a video and figure out how to do it. You actually gotta see it and feel it and watch what the metal does as you work the metal. And uh, once you seize it and you say, oh, this is what's gotta happen. So this has gotta go this way, I gotta stretch this this way. And you figure things out. Uh, I learned a lot here just by this today. I don't do a lot of these panels, uh, like in terms of uh, making my own panels, crown panels, you know, large sections. So what I'm gonna do here now is I'm just gonna basically walk you through the process of what I did with it. Uh, I got the panel made. I got into it to the whole point that I was more concerned about figuring it out than I was actually about filming it. Because uh, it was a lot of troubles. I spent a lot of time folding up metal as you can see. The panels I got fooled up. But I'll show you everything I went through here now. I'll make a small section and I'll show you the process of what happens and uh, where I went with this entire panel. So all I've done here now is I've taken, I got a small sample piece that I'm going to take this now and I'm going to take this here and do the same process I did to make the larger panel and uh, I'm going to walk you through it and show you what happens and uh, how, we, how I come about to get everything, okay? Now right off the bat, this is a perfectly square piece. Now on the car, uh, it has to be a tape around it. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark it out and I'm going to put a slight tape around the bottom of this here and this will be my bottom section that will be rolling in underneath the bottom of the car. So I'm gonna go ahead now, trim off this section here, and then get it ready to roll. I ran a piece of tape, got the tape around it, so I tapered off on the bottom, then I marked it with a marker. Now I'm gonna go ahead now, and I'm gonna trim that off and clean up that edge. So I went ahead and I cut the bottom section off it, okay? And I got a curvature on the bottom of it now, and then I went ahead and I grinded off the bottom inch or so of the bottom of it. And the reason for that is because I, uh, it will not shrink nothing in this here with the paint on it, which is obvious, right? I'm not going to strip the rest of it yet. I'm going to do the same process as I did on the other one because I used this here when I had the English wheel on it. It worked okay. So what I got to do now is I got to roll this edge, okay? So I got to roll this edge over. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to clamp it on the eye beam there now and take my hammer and dolly and just roll the edge over on it. As you can see, I got a little roll going the full end of it. It's probably the same roll I put on the other panel. I didn't roll it all the way through. So now that I got that roll over, there's a little bit of strength in it, giving it here is up off the off the eye beam. So it's up a bit. Push down out there, right? So it's starting to crown this way on me. Okay? And that's that's a good thing. Uh, now the next thing I do is I gotta start shrinking it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shrink it from in here and work my way to the outside going along as I'm going. Now you're not familiar with these, uh, these are uh, shrinker stretchers, uh, they're designed to stretch and shrink metal, and basically all of those, that's your metal there, this one here pulls the metal together, that one there pulls it apart, okay, that's the easiest way to describe it. What I got to do is I got to shrink the center of this, so I got to pull the metal, metal together, so I'll make the bottom of it, the curvature here, it'll shorten up this bottom curve, so all I did is start shrinking the bottom side of it.
All I'll do is I move around all about an inch because that's how wide the teeth are, about an inch wide. Now as you can see, it actually curves the pan panel, okay? It lifts it up in the middle here as it goes out to the outer edge. Because what I'm doing is I'm making this end shorter and I'm shortening it up so the metal has to come from somewhere so it pulls on either side, right? So I'm going to uh, shrink this up a little bit more because I, I got the one thing I found that when I part started to put the English wheel on it, what ended up happening is the... Uh, it actually fought this here and actually closed it up some more. So I need to put a larger gap here for in order for the English wheel to actually take the difference of it to bring it back to this. Now I repeated the same process again. You can see here now, I got a fair bit of room here. So now it's crowned, the panel is crowned up a lot. So this is what you got to do in order to get it to go around the back of the car. Um, so the next thing I had to do now is to uh, put this in English wheel and crown this section up. All I use is a slight crown wheel and I just have enough tension on it to get the two wheels to touch. And that's all I did. Now I just slowly worked it back and forth, going from one side to the other. Tedious process. A bit more tape shot. Best to work up to it. Don't try to go all in the first time. Ask me how I know that one. But uh, as a way to learn, I can guarantee you that. Uh, you just get to see what the metal does, right? And all I'm doing is moving to the outside of the panel to the inside of the panel. Now it might be hard to see there. But there is a crown on that panel. Got a straight edge here. You can see it there now, see? There's a crown going right up through that panel. One up through there. Don't need a big one. Well, you get the idea. If you want to put a bigger one in it, you can put a bigger one in it. Okay? But that's basically all I did to make that panel over there. So, you know, uh, I found it better to uh, do the roll first and then shrink it. I was trying everything to uh, shrink this. The problem I had, now you look at this again, yeah? Since we run this through a wheel. And you can see how much this is closed up, see? From, from before. So I had to take that into account. I, I saw that happening. So by wheeling this here, it stretches the metal, which basically relieves this tension off of the outside edge. So this closes up. So this crown gets smaller. So you got to put a bigger crown in it for when you English, English wheel it, that'll actually, uh, it'll basically, uh, it'll push it back to the distance that you wanted originally, right? I hope that was uh, helpful to, so you understood how I actually made that panel. Uh, it's just pretty simple, you know, simple roll. And uh, I shrank it along the edge here, and then I run it through the English wheel in that order. I found that when you ran it through the English wheel first, uh, it just made it harder to work with. And uh, it's just, I just found it easier this way. So, anyway, let's get the panel put in. So, I went ahead and I stripped down all the paint off the two panels. And I got them laid here now, just on the floor, so you can see what they're shaped like. You can see, you can see the way that there crowns up off the floor. Okay. 
this one here that's got a roll on it. I got the two lips there. They'll be worked after the fact. All I'm concerned about right now is these two edges here joining up. And this will give me a full roll. It's a lot easier to build a full panel out of two sections like this than it is to try to build a whole panel. It can be done. Uh, but it's this here is a lot easier. I find it anyway. So I'm going to go ahead now and fit these up on the car. And start getting ready to uh, weld the two of them together. Okay, I got the two panels put back in place, and I got them, they overlap here now, where the two of them joins, okay? This one here is probably up underneath that one, probably that much. So all I'm going to do for now is I'm going to start in the middle, right here, and I'm going to tack weld two of them together there, and then work my way outside like that, and work my way across it like that there, bringing the panel in until it gets to the outside edge here, right here. That way I can actually dolly the panel up before I actually, uh, actually do a cutting butt on it. I'm going to basically tack weld it all together, uh, right across there, take the panel off, dolly it all up, and then I fit it back on the car again. I'm going to, I want to weld this on the car. Uh, as nice as it would be just laid up on the bench and welded, I figure it's just going to want to open up. I mean, it's going to be hard to reinstall on the car. If it's all clamped in place where it's supposed to go and it starts welding it, uh, at least then it's going to, uh, there's something there to fight against it to keep it from moving. So there you have it, got them all tack welded together. You see me what I was doing? I'd weld the tack and then I'd move over and hammer two inches and come back an inch and weld, hammer two inches, come back and weld an inch and just so on and so on as I got it done because the problem with it is the two panels weren't exactly round together and you could see it, it was pulling closer as when I hammered it. I put the dolly that had the curvature on the inside of it here and I just hammered, hammered it flat and I just worked my way across that side and then come over and work my way across this side. I wouldn't recommend starting from one end and going to the other. Start from the middle because that's your highest crown and work your way back. I came back so far and then I knew that it was stationary so then I just continued on with each side and finished it off. Now that I got that done there, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take it off. I'm going to dolly it up and size up, have a close look at it up on his end, see how it looks and everything. And then I'm going to turn around and I'm still debating on whether I'm going to cut and bought that off the car. Uh, I might just cut it and tack it so it's a lot easier to work with. And uh, once I get it all tacked in place, I'll fill it back on the car and I'll finish welding it back on the car. And I want it on the car to fully weld it, but I think I might be able to do the cotton bust like, and just tack it every three to four inches with... Uh, Basically, it would off the car. It might be a lot easier. We'll see. So there it is off the car. As you can see, looking up across the now, you can see the crown, the curvature of it. You can see the curvature this way, the way it's curved. Double crown, and you can look across it there and see there's a, a crown over there. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to try my luck, and I'm going to do a cotton bud along here. But I'm only going to tack weld it back on again so that I can fit it back on the car. And I may have to shape it a bit to get the fit back. So I'm going to cut this now because you can see this is overlapped here now. So it's going to be working and everything. So I'm going to start from one end here and just start doing a cut and bust. Go four or five inches, line it up, tack weld it place, move on again. Not going to do a large section, too large of a section at a time. And I'll just take my time and I'll do the cut and bust on that.
So I went ahead and got all cotton bought. Like uh, you, you see me up here, cutting so far and then tapping it down and fitting it and tapping it down and fitting it. There's the piece that I cut out. That was on the back side of it. Put the full length of it. So now it's actually fully bot welded on the back side. Well, it's ready for bot welding. I'm going to weld this inside as well. And uh, weld the outside. Now the trick is how much did that move? Because I expected that's going to end up opening up like that on me. So I'm going to go now and see how close I am to fitting this back on the car again. Well, surprise with that. That fit on there. A little bit of tweaking. But other than that, that worked pretty good. So now that I got that all put in place, walls are bolted on there, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and weld all that up, just taking my time, uh, one spot weld at a time every inch or so, and letting it cool down, and uh, basically, I basically get all that welded up, and I'm going to get into showing you all that, I've showed you enough. I'm just going to turn around now and just spot weld this here, every inch or so, let it cool down, and then come back, so spot weld it every inch or two. So I'm going to go ahead and get all this welded up. So I went ahead and you saw me welding that up there. I spot welded every inch or so and just kept going, cooling it off until it was all welded up. Then I went ahead back now and I grinded it all off with 24 grit. This is only my first pass. There's a couple of spots I missed and there's a couple of spots got to be redone again. But what I'm going to do here first now is I'm going to take the panel off. I'm going to weld the inside. I like to weld the outside, grind it, and then weld the inside. I don't like welding the inside after I weld the outside. It affects everything and it's harder to grind on the outside. It throws everything off. At least now that I got everything grinded off on the outside, when I welds it from the inside, I can see what's going on on the outside. So I'm going to pop this panel off now and weld it all up on the inside. Same process as what I did on the outside, one spot at a time. So I took the panel off, laid it on the bench, and I went and I dollied it up, put dolly behind it and hammered it to just get some high spots out of it and have it sort of felt pretty good on there. So I'm going to do it now. So I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to weld the inside of it. And there you have it, all welded up. Feels real good, got a nice flow to it. You stand up and look across it, and you can see the way it's shaped. So it's got a bunch of things going on there. Look at it across this way here. You can see down across it, see this crown. There's a lot going on there. It was a complicated piece to make, but uh, we overcame. And we join it right in through the, the roll here. It's always easier to do it that way than it is to try to turn around and make the whole piece. I don't think, like, with the whole piece made, you'd get this in English wheel afterwards. So it would have to be done this way, right? I'm going to put that on now, see how it fits. So 
So there you have it. Got that panel all made. All I got left to do with that now is install it. I'm not going to install it yet. I got to get into making all these panels here. I would like to have the taillight section and all this is one so I can weld the inside of it and have all that done nice and strong. Uh, this video is getting really long now, so I'm going to end this here. I'm not going to get into the taillight as of yet. I'll do that in the next video. But as you can see, it was a big undertaking. Crowning this way, crowning this way, and then rolling underneath. Um, you know, you don't need a lot of equipment to build panels like that. Uh, you know, uh, I had to use a shrinker and stretcher on this one as, as well as an English wheel. But all the stuff that I had was like stuff that uh, you get at Harbour Freight, Princess Auto, and, uh, you know, just a little simple little homemade English wheel. So, you know, it worked out really well. I'm pleased with it. It flows really nice with the car. The way it crowns down underneath the back of it. Very pleased with it. Anyway, I'm going to leave this one here. I hope the tips are good. And until next time. Yeah. Boys, oh boys. Whoop.